welcome to the porch again. I'm on my rocking chair. It's evening. Uh, we're again looking at Time Magazine, but first I want to tell you that one of my favorite auth authors is Naomi Klein, and I see her on Democracy Now! quite a bit. And she's talked about this, that there's a possibility that there's some hope for a good progressive change uh, in this COVID pandemic if the progressive people of America and uh, right-thinking Americans uh, finally decide to get back to um, busting trust and, and figuring out how to make sure the system works better than it has been for the last hundred years. We're talking here about uh, how now is the moment to change the world. I'll show you. Now is the moment to change the world by Rudger Bregman. How will the coronavirus change the world? Nobody knows yet, but we do know when we were hit, we were uh, where we were before the pandemic hit, pandemic hit, inequality had reached historic records worldwide. They're still getting to be more extreme each day. Australia, for example, had burned for months on end. Autocrats were suffocating democracy in Hungary and Venezuela. And a wave of protests had swept across six continents in the past year from Beirut to Paris, from Hong Kong to Moscow. And then came COVID-19. The virus laid bare the world's extraordinary inequalities and injustices. Lists of so-called vital professions were published all over the world and surprise, surprise, surprise. Positions such as head fund, hedge fund manager and tax specialist for multinationals were not among them. Suddenly it was crystal clear who did the really important work in healthcare and education, in public transport, in supermarkets. The general rule seemed to be the more vital your work, the less you were paid. And I'm a teacher and I should know. The more insecure your employment and the more at risk you are to fight coronavirus too. To be fighting against coronavirus too. Uh, so those who are less paid, less appreciated historically, at least in the last 40 years, 50 years, uh, the anti-education movement, anti-science movement has been proliferating. Uh, we're the ones who are fighting the coronavirus. We're the ones who are out there working. We're the ones who have to uh, school children in the middle of this stress and hopefully um, work on what we need to do education-wise, especially in the coming months and school year. Uh, there are those of you who think we shouldn't politicize the pandemic. There are also those who say we need to speak right now. Decisions about our future are being made in weeks, days, and hours, the consequences of which will be felt for decades. Let's be clear. These are the circumstances in which history is written. In 1930s America, for example, the New Deal was conceived in the midst of the Great Depression. We need to follow some of the practices there, like getting people's homes uh, under proper safe banking conditions, unlike we've had in recent years where so many people have lost homes. We need to uh, continue to uh, break bus trust as they did in the Theodore Roosevelt era, and they should be doing now. Uh, in the UK of the 1940s, the beverage report, the prime text of the British welfare state was written and published while the bombs fell on London. In other words, uh, moments like these can change history. And yes, it could also go the other way, the wrong way. After the burning of the Reichstag in 1933, Adolf Hitler was given far-reaching powers to restore the peace, and he did he not do it. Uh, the attack of uh, attacks of September 11, 2001 were followed by a war on terror that's never stopped. It's been incredibly expensive in terms of human life, etc. And we have now a mass surveillance citizens of C by secret services like never before. There's an old quote that I can't get out of my head these past few weeks. It's from Milton Friedman. 
one of the most influential economists of the 20th century and also one of the most dangerous. In 1982, he wrote only a crisis, actual or perceived. That means an imaginary one like they did in the election of 2000, which pushed uh, George W. Bush to office. Uh, a made-up crisis can uh, produce a real change. When cr that crisis occurs, the actions that are taken depend on the ideas that are lying around. Right now, we are in the biggest crisis since the Second World War, maybe since the Great Depression. The economic impact of COVID-19 uh, is greater than the impact of the Great Recession of 2008, that's for sure, and may even be greater than that of the Great de uh, Depression of the 1930s. And if history teaches us anything, it's that extraordinary things are possible. Everything depends on the ideas that are lying around. In other words, the ones that have been lying around tell on the world that it's important to consider the fact that uh, the inequality is way out of ha hand in the world. That um, too many uh, people think that, who, with wealth, think that the government is their bank. All right, here's the cover of that Time magazine. Uh, on the left-hand side, We've got the Great Depression of the 1930s, where unemployment was up over 25%. And that doesn't include a lot of people who are underemployed or minorities. And of course, it went down slowly through the 1930s. And then World War II started and it went way down. And then we had some ups and downs, but it never went really past, uh, near 10% until the, again, the Reagan years. They're the ones who supposedly taught us better. And then again, during uh, 2008, 2009. And then finally, now we're back over 20%. Reckoning. Um, right now, we're in the biggest crisis since the Second World War. And we need to do something. So what are the ideas that have been lying around that need to be shared? In 2011, the protester was the Times Person of the Year. Since then, ideas that used to be dismissed as unreasonable or unrealistic have moved into the mainstream. Many of these have been by, uh, pushed by radical rightist uh, think tanks, Nazism and stuff like that. But others have come from people like Thomas Piketty, who became famous as an economist around the world. Think about how an unknown Asian American businessman, Andrew Yang, galvanized millions of Americans with an idea, universal income this past year, that just a couple of years ago was almost forgotten. And thinking about how a Swedish girl, Greta Thunberg, still only 17 years old, who kickstarted the biggest climate justice movement this world has ever seen. In April, the Financial Times, the world's leading business paper, published an article from the editorial that showed um, just how much the times have changed. Radical reforms reversing the policy direction of the last four decades, I'd say at least five decades, will need to be put on the table, the paper said. Policies, that means the Reagan air blew it. All you guys who've been thinking that Reagan was a great American hero and what he'd done for the economy and the world was a great, no, he messed this up. You've been reading uh, made-up, fictitious history, not based upon the realities. There was 10% unemployment in many parts of America during the Reagan era. And there was also in the cities 20, 30, 40% unemployment, especially among young black people. That was the 1980s. And people tried to model the next three decades on this Reagan uh, um, take from the poor, trickle down from the rich sort of government. Um, um, I'm going to say the Financial Times is a very conservative paper. Policy, uh, they're saying that uh, it's time to tax the rich, increase the size of government, and give free money to everyone. You could say, not everyone, not the wealthiest. You could say, well, this is all very interesting, but didn't you get the memo about socialist Jeremy Corbyn being crushed in Britain's election recently? And didn't you hear that the revolutionary Bernie Sanders actually lost to the moderate Joe Biden? Haven't social Democrats been losing elections after election in Europe? True, but when we zoom out, take the big picture, and people on the port should take the big picture because we can see very far. Um, uh, 
Sanders has the tax plan for Biden. It's twice as radical as Hillary Clinton's tax plan was in 2016. His $1.7 trillion dollar climate plan includes 30 times as much clean energy commitment as Clinton's in 2016, and is even more ambitious than that of Sanders four years ago. And yes, Corbyn did lose the 2017 and 2019 elections okay. in the UK, but the conservatives eventually uh, began increasing public spending and it became closer and closer to Labour's than their own manifesto. Meanwhile, it's important to remember that yesterday's so-called radical ideas, like higher taxes on the rich or ambitious climate action, are now supported by a vast majority of people in developed countries as well as the United States. Last year, a survey of 22,000 people in 21 countries found that the majority think the government should tax the rich more in order to support the poor. 21 of the richest countries said that. Um, and the majority think the government should tax the rich more than has ever been, I mean, at least in recent memory, been the practice. In January, a Reuters poll found that even two-thirds of Americans, two-thirds of Americans believe that the very rich should pay more taxes, and this includes 53% of the Republicans. Historians have long known that a crisis can be a turning point for societies, and it has been. And it's not difficult to imagine how this crisis could lead us down a dark path, like it did in Nazi Germany. COVID-19 could be like 9-11, a terrible tragedy abused by those in power. We don't want it to be, but there's an alternative. It's possible. It's because of all of those protesters who have made the unthinkable thinkable in recent years. Just as America reinvented itself after the Great Depression, this crisis could lead to something better. The age of excessive individualism and competition could come to an end, and we could inaugurate a new age of solidarity and connection. It may be hard to believe in such a revival when you turn on the television and hear about people stealing toilet paper or armed men protesting. In moments like these, it's tempting to conclude that most people are selfish and simply egotistical. But we have to remember that the media often focus on the negatives and we need to take a look at the bigger picture. Again, from my porch, I can see far. Uh, we'll see that the crisis deepens. Solidarity must bloom, just as it's been happening recently until uh, people with guns started taking over Capitol buildings. Those jerks. There's been an explosion of altruism and cooperation in America. People singing from balconies, neighbors collecting food, volunteers sewing masks, doctors, nurses, and cleaners risking their lives on the front lines for us. For the past five years, I've studied how in the past... Uh, past decades, a, two, scientists from all over the world have switched from a cynical to a more hopeful view of humanity. Human beings, they say, have not evolved to fight and compete, but to make friends and work together. I'll say it again. Human beings have not evolved to fight and compete, but to make friends and work together. Our unique ability to cooperate may explain the success of our species in the long term and historically. In a time of extraordinary challenges like we're facing right now, when COVID-19 seems like just a prequel to the global climate crisis, we need to assume the best in one another. As a historian, I can't say I'm optimistic, but I'm hopeful because hope impels us all to act. Um, Bregman, who wrote this article, is a Dutch historian and a staff writer of uh, the Correspondent newspaper. Uh, his new book, Humankind, A Hopeful History, will be published on June 2nd. Um, this is the kind of stuff we need to be acting from. So as we get out of our houses, if it's safe, we need to look at the world outside and say, can we have a better day? Can we have a better day? Can we have a better day? Yes, we can have better days. We make better days for our grandchildren. It's going to take solidarity. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to take sharing, commitment. How about love first rather than 
property and, and uh, demanding more from the government by the wealthiest, it's going to take also a people who uh, should be out working to get out and work, but support for those who are doing that. And other people are going to need to stay at home until we get the solution to this problem. We've got summer ahead of us, a long summer. I hope that the rate of in, or incidences of COVID-19 go down. And I hope your families are safe. In the meantime, plan for a better world. Talk this up. Make sure we seize the day. Don't go back to the Reagan way, which really has not brought us anything but 50 years now of stagnation in the lower echelons of the economy from the middle class downward. Uh, people are not earning what they should have been earning according to even statistics from the 1960s, early 70s. We have not been earning that and we need to. We need to have stability, less stress in our lives. We need to be able to focus on things. No more just-in-time economy. No more just-in-time um, healthcare plans. No more just-in-time uh, solving problems or production. No more just-in-time saving the environment from uh, climate change. We must do a better job. I hope you join this movement. Have a good day from the porch.